Um, if you have your Bibles, I want to talk to you. I just want to open the text this morning. Uh, if you allow me to do this, I just want to open the text this morning. I want to to introduce to you the themes of the text uh, because uh, there's a message here, and then we'll talk about uh, the position and disposition and opposition that's in the text. Uh, thank God uh, for the victory that God gives us. Because I don't know where you are, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find you somewhere in this text, uh, either this morning or the next day, because we can relate to these men who are ill. We can relate to them, because God is trying to tell us something. And, and I, know this, I know this morning that your hearts might be heavy for one thing or another, because I've learned in the church that you don't know what folk are going through Amen. from one week to another. Amen. You, you have no idea what hit sister so-and-so been through. And it's by the grace of God that she's sitting in the church house this morning. And so, so, so the, the, the word, the real word, uh, his logos, his, his legion, his, his word will move and it will reach you where you are. Uh, and and, and there will be a blessing for somebody. And so uh, I always tell people the last thing I want to do during the preach word is not be tuned in or dialed in because uh, God may be sending something directly for you. Praise God. Look at the text, if you will. I want to talk to you today but about I don't have anything to lose. I don't have anything to lose. Here are four lepers, and leprosy was a curse in those days. It was uh, uh, the most horrible, wretched illness a man could have. It, it is a disease in which even the Jewish people had ascribed laws within the context of their culture that when a person had leprosy, they were... Uh, to be kept separate from the rest of the Jewish community. And they were to announce themselves unclean and unclean, and, and, and they were not only marginalized and discriminated against, but uh, they were literally uh, talked about and ridiculed and abused, if you will. Uh, this was the worst thing that could ever happen to a person. And on top of all of that, there is a war going on. The Syrian army has surrounded uh, the people of God and their city, and, 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 and they are they, they're a mighty army raised by God because of disobedience of the people. And they, they, they have besieged the city and nothing can move out or in. And folk are starving. The times are so bad that they're even uh, uh, offering their babies uh, or eating their children. And cannibalism is taking place. And it's a wretched, horrible time. And here are these four men uh, who need medical attention. Who needs somebody to talk to? You ever need somebody to talk to? Uh, they're sitting, notice their position. They're sitting outside of the gate. Four men who are outside of the gate. Inside are the people of God. But the people of God don't want anything to do with them. Have you ever sat outside the church and you can't find love inside the church? Yeah. To make matters worse, outside the gate where the poor and folk who needed help were sitting because uh, the, the, the church people had to culturize themselves uh, during those times to marginalize people by shunning them away and pushing them away is an army, a massive army, who take no prisoners. They have a choice because they've been hungry enough, frustrated enough, used enough, tired enough, that they've reached the point they say, I can't sit here any longer. Look at your neighbor and say, we can't sit here any longer. We got to make a decision. If we go inside the city, they're they going to kill us. The reason they're going to kill you is because you can't allow leprosy to come into the city at a time that we're besieged and a pandemic or an epidemic break out the cause of the disease that you have. Oh, I'll, I'll, let, me, let, me, let me bring this home for you very quickly. Come out the text just for a minute. Uh, Sometimes folk inside the church act like they have never sinned and they've never been sick before. And every time you come in, you're going to get somebody else sick. And they'll kill your joy and your smile. You, 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 have, you have the spiritual world of all to know that what you need to do is come from outside the world and into the church house. But when you come into the church house, don't mean you well. And when you get inside the church house, somebody will kill your joy with their big mouth. Talk about, I ain't seen you in four or five weeks. If you don't let me alone, you're not going to see me in another four. So he said, we, we can't go in there because folk play too much in 
name. We might get into a rumble. Yeah, y'all ain't y'all ain't never left the church for a moment. If I go over there, there's a whole lot of folks up in there rolling their eyes, talking about why he clapping. I'm clapping because God brought me. It can't be for God. I still be outside. You don't know what I've been through on those streets out there. You know what kind of hell I see. Let me alone. I'm shouting because God's done something for me. And they say we go in there. They're gonna kill us. Then, if we sit right here, and I'll be back to just spin, if we sit right here, we're going to die. And if we go to our enemy, maybe, now this is bad, maybe the, the Syrian army, maybe the, the, the devil will have more compassion on us than church folk would have on us. And you know, somebody while they're sitting in that discussion said, but they might kill you too. And then he finally says, we ain't got nothing to lose. Either way it goes, we're going to have to move. And let me tell you, can I say this very quickly? Some of us that are sitting here right now, you've been sitting where you're sitting. Your 2013 looked like your 2012. Your 2012 looked like your 2011. Your 2011 looked like your 2010. You are at a point in your life, you can't keep sitting here being the same person you've been in 13, 12, and 11. It's time for you to move by faith. You got nothing to lose. You don't have anything. You can't keep sitting here doing the same stuff you've done, making the same excuses over and over. You don't have anything to lose, but everything to gain. Because when they move by faith, they found favor in the law. Y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. They, they moved to this massive army, and because they moved by faith, y'all better listen to me right now. If you just move by faith, God gonna do something. God gonna do something. They didn't ask God to do it. They didn't pray to God. They just made a decision that we gonna find faith or fatality, but we gonna find the favor of God somewhere. And they moved toward the enemy. And when they got to the enemy, the enemy was gone. And they was in there eating and throwing pot burger bones and grim bones and eating hot jaws and mop fat backs. Y'all know what I'm saying? While the whole church go over there starving. Y'all not listen to me right now. Uh, oh, oh, if I had five people the Holy Ghost, y'all be doing some books right now. Oh, man. I'm trying to tell you something. Y'all not listen to me. Watch this. Watch this. Maybe, 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 maybe I messed it up. Oh, help me, Jesus. Maybe I messed it up. Maybe I messed it up. Maybe they, they moved by faith. And faith will get you to the faith of God. God scared off an entire army of warriors who left all kinds of food and treasure in the camp. Are you, are you with me? They outside of the church. They move by faith, not knowing whether they die or live. When they got to the place, they found faith from God. Oh, are y'all with me? Now, I'm not telling you to be outside of Christ because you can't get nothing outside of Christ. But they show more faith than for inside of Christ. Because of Christ was here inside of God's kingdom at this time. But now watch this. The folk who were inside the gate, who were secure in the traditional stuff they had been doing, who had been secure, and at least we got these walls to protect us, and secure their own resources, and at least they had company with folk. They were hungry and starving and eating children while the lepers were over there enjoying fine delicacy placed there by God. Uh, Haven't you ever sit back and wonder why is it that folk you know ain't doing right? Amen. Getting all the blessings. Amen. Why folk that don't go to church driving nicer cars than you? Amen. Got nicer houses, prettier boyfriends than you got. How she get you? Because God put some shades on you. Can't you see how lovely she is? Regardless who has it. Amen. But faith alone does 
what I say. Amen. Are y'all all right? Y'all all right? I don't care. It, it, when, when you in, inoculate yourself with faith in God, by law, James 2, 16, faith without works is dead. All right, you have to understand what God is saying here, what saying through James. James said, you show me your faith. Get from me, James chapter 2, around verse 16. Uh -huh, because, because what you have to do is move from your seat of fatality and move to a place of faith and do something you can't see that you can do. There's somebody you've been with in your little collection of four leprosy that's had you stuck in the same place all your life. Ever since you've been with him, y'all been broke, y'all been hungry, you've been struggling, catching hell, and you people say, I can't lose him. Honey, you better learn to drop that zero and get you a hero and have faith to move out by the power of God. I had If faith alone saved, then James 2.19 says the devil will be saved. Because James 2 said, James 2.19, 2.19 2 says, Thou believe there's one God, thou does well. But the devils also believe and tremble, but he ain't saved. Am I right about it? But faith through something else will save. Faith uh, in the Old Testament who moved in faith would deliver you from your situation. But in the New Testament, he that believeth and is baptized is saved. There's faith in what? Works. Baptism. You have to have faith and what? And works. Alright, so I don't want y'all to be teaching the wrong thing. I want to make sure y'all have it. Everybody alright? Okay, brother Kevin ain't still been talking about my lesson not about baptism. I had to clear it up to it, folks. I know some of y'all go out here lying quick, and I gotta help y'all. I want you to get in trouble, y'all alright? Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. I, I know I got some devils in here, but you can't hear what he preaches. When he preached, he should have been preaching. No way. He on medication and stuff. He's sick. You gotta lay down. He's gonna be dead. But you tell me he's alive because I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna preach and keep on preaching till God called me home. Praise God in the house. And I know you're sorry. I know you're sorry. Whatever. He's gonna get suffering here. He's gonna tell me my problem is is I've been sitting in the seat. Let me tell you something. If you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again, it's because we have fear. That's replace your faith. And you from one man or one woman after another. And you still now, how long you been doing that? Ever since you've been 20, you had to spend two years by yourself to get to know who you are. From one, from one person to another. Bob, Brian, Billy, Billy, Bobby, Bowlegs, Buffalo Joe, you know, all this kind of stuff. But the end result, you ain't, you're not happy. And all God said, when you have faith, so you and I have a relationship, I'm going to bless your faith with faith. You, you miss it. When you have faith to walk away from the fringes of sin, I'm going to give you the favors from heaven. And I'm going to bless you. That it's going to mess the folk inside the gate. Up in their head, they're gonna try to figure out how it is that you have been so blessed. And the reason you've been blessed is because when you should have been down and out, when you should have given up, when you should have stopped coming to church, when you should have been rolling out, when you should have been taken out of the you can faith in God and say, Lord, leave me lest I strength. God said, I'm gonna bless you for that. I don't, I don't, there's nothing wrong with God blessing that. And what's the faith word, James 2? James 2 16, that where you are. So then faith. All right. Even so, even so faith, faith, if it has not worked, if it has not worked, it's dead being alone. And, and that's why that's why I tell folk all the time. Y'all need to quit preaching to folk that if you ain't got to be baptized, you don't have to be saved because you got to believe that doesn't move you to the water. You just sitting in the same place. And then can I say this very quickly? What do you have to lose by being baptized this morning? Amen. Well, what do you have to lose Amen. if you keep doing what you're doing? You don't know if you're going to be saved. If you, if you go backwards to the old law, there is no salvation in there. But if you move forward, perhaps God has something. What do you have to lose this morning by getting out of your seat and saying, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. But what am I really going to lose by being a member of the kingdom of God, the church of Christ? What am I going to lose? I'm certainly not going to lose my salvation. I don't even know if I got salvation. I'm in an argument back and forth. But if I get back, y'all all right? So even so, then faith without words is what? It's dead. It's dead. All right, read. 
Yeah, a man, a man may say, a man may say that I have faith. I have faith. And I have work. You can talk about what the outcome can be, and that's the problem many of us, and we're constantly talking about what could happen. Well, if we go there, I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't like this. And you've been doing it for a long time. You don't want to do it in church, but you do it at work. You're doing your relationship with friends. That's why you all around here talking about right now. I don't have a lot of friends. You have a lot of friends because you won't make a commitment to nobody. You won't, you won't stop your selfishness. You just keep sitting in the same spot you've been in. You keep on saying, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's wrong with everybody else. But let me tell you, the common denominator in your life is you. And the problem is you got to take a look at yourself. you got to ask yourself, what is it going to hurt me to smile sometimes? What is it going to hurt me sometimes? Can I help you very quickly? Let me come out the text just for a minute. Can I come out the text for a minute? What is it going to hurt you? You ain't never gave God glory and praise because you don't worship like that. <laughs>
Ephesians 2, the sixth of the, of the right. Now, y'all not say that I'm through. If you sit back down, I'm going to keep on preaching. Don't do that. I'm trying to let you go home. Praise God. I'm trying to let somebody else in the house. You can get on your own. Like, and praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? The devil man right now. Because they changed the way they sit. They left the unemotional thing. Their excuses. Their reasoning. Their logic, if you will. And they realized that the only way they're going to get what they're going to get from God is there's going to be some faith initiated. But I'm suggesting you on Monday morning, God touch your heart and wake you up to make another day. You need to incorporate some faith in your life. You need to do something because the Spirit's moving you to do something. And when you get what God has for you, turn around and shout glory! Somebody look at your neighbor shout glory! Somebody's been sitting, has been outside of Christ for a long time. But you come down this aisle. What do you have to lose? Come down this aisle. You, you left the church. What you have to lose? Yeah. You tried your way 20 years. Yeah. How did it work in play? Yeah. How's it work in play? Yeah. How, how, how many times have Satan used you? Yeah. You've been like you've been for a long time. You I'm saying got nothing to lose. Yeah. I, I, you know, my way, I, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling and struggling. I'm out here down in the in the cut. Folk knew me outside the cut. They'd be surprised. I was like, what do you have to lose? But you got everything. You got everything to gain. Are y'all listening to me? You got everything to gain. Try Jesus this morning. That's not what you got. That's what you got. If you two, six, two, nine. And has raised us up. He's raised us up. Hold on. God raises us up. Together. Together. That's the power of God. Together. All right, read. And made us to sit together in heavenly places. I didn't just sit up. I was so bad, God had to make. <laughs> he had to make me sit in the right place. Y'all know what I'm Amen. Amen. God said, and made us sit together. And what? In heavenly places. In heavenly Christ places. Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In. In Christ. In Christ. I can't sit anywhere, but in. Christ Jesus. His church in Christ Jesus. Yes. That in the ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches. That I can show when you sit in the right place, in a, in, in an acceptable time. Oh my God! I, I, I better stop. I'm so preaching again. When he sits you in the right place, he don't immediately do what he gonna do. But in the ages to come, he gonna show you. Exceeding riches. See, some of y'all just gotta make the church. You better get ready for a blessing because God gonna show you in time to come. His exceeding what? Is exceeding what? Is exceeding riches. One penny from God is a million dollars on earth. If He just give you a penny, I'm not listening to me. You be crazy. I'm gonna show you my exceeding riches. Are y'all all right? All right. And what else? Of His grace and kindness. His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ. Praise God. Amen. Now, if you don't, what, what do you got to lose? You got everything to gain. You have the riches of God, the grace of God, His kindness. But it's even Christ Jesus. Amen. You heard the word this morning. The Bible says, Romans 10, verse 7, so that faith come by here, hear by the word of God. You believe what you've heard. Mark 16 and 16 is the command. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes and not shall be saved. You've been in that situation, you've been in for a long time. Different faces, but it's the same you. You've been in and out of bed, but then they end it, it's good for the first month, then it's, you know, okay, and then you just back to acting silly. Amen. Y'all are saying, man. Amen. You've been doing the same stuff for years. You've been with him. Y'all been in the same unspiritual, pseudo-spiritual relationship for 20 years. You play in church, he play in church. So when you get mad, it's whoever cuss each other out first. And you realize y'all been playing church. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when, when, when you're together, y'all got to tell the truth in the church. Y'all been doing it, but what if you really got spiritual this morning? And said, so I'm going to be the Christian in the house this morning. I'm going to say all these promises. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be a Christian. If you do that, Jesse, have a wife, I can see. <laughs> Dang it! Have a wife, you see. <laughs> because folk decided to get real with it. Luke 13 and 3, now I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Matthew 10, 32. The Bible says, if you confess before me, and I'm going to do something before I confess before my fathers in heaven, then you must put them on in baptism. I like the story of Peter, 
And Peter makes an analogy. He said in 1 Peter 3, 19, he said, once the ark was prepared, when Jesus went and preached to the souls that were in the pierce, that were eight, saved, uh, the eight souls were saved by water, the life figure, water dove, now also save us. And so we have to be baptized. We have to be baptized. Matthew 28, 19, we have to be baptized. If you're here and you have been baptized, come down here and give me a hand, God, your heart. If you're here and you've been sitting outside the gate, you've been in church, but you ain't really been in church, come down and say, sisters, but I've seen, I'm coming to take my seat back in the house of God. The lesson is yours. I hear the song leader singing. I hear the song leader singing. All, all, all to Jesus. Jesus. Come right here.